Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can write a C program to display the Fibonacci series. In mathematics, the Fibonacci numbers commonly denoted like this form a sequence called as the Fibonacci sequence where the first two numbers are 0 and 1 and after that every number is a sum of the previous two numbers. So we can say that fn equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So here as I said before f0 is 0 this is the first number and f1 is 1. These are the two numbers and after that when this n value becomes greater than 1 we have fn equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So the first number is 0, second number is 1 and after that uh, we have to add previous two numbers. The next number will be 1 that is because 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 and after that these two numbers will be added so it will become 2 and after that these two numbers will be added and it will become 3 then 5 then 8 then 13 and like that. And here in this video what we're going to do is we can ask the user to enter how many numbers of the Fibonacci series he wants to print. We say how many terms he want to print in the Fibonacci series. If the user is going to enter let's say 4 then we display the first 4 number of the Fibonacci series and they will be 0, 1, 1, 2, that's it. And if the user is going to enter any number in here, we will display that many terms or that many numbers of the Fibonacci series. Now let us see how we can write a C program for this one. Here I have already written some code. I have included the stdio.h header file so that we can use the functions like printf, scanf. And then we have the main function which is the entry point of our program. Now in this video, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare the variables that we are going to use in our program and I'm going to take integer type of variables and the first variable that we need is for storing the number entered by the user and uh, we will display that many terms or that many numbers of the Fibonacci series. So I'm going to call it as number and we know that in the Fibonacci series a number is the addition of previous two numbers. To store those previous two numbers we will use a couple of variables and I'm going to call them as t1 and t2 short for term 1 and term 2. So we will initialize them with the first two values. So the first number is 0, the second number is 1 and after that we need a variable for calculating the next number. So we will uh, create that next term and after that we need another variable for using a for loop because if the user is going to enter let's say five numbers then uh, we will use a for loop and we will loop from one to five. So I'm going to call it as counter. Okay now the next thing that we're going to do is we can ask the user to enter the number. So I'm going to use the printf function in here and uh, here we will say enter the number of terms and after that we will take the input from the user using the scanf function and we will store the input in a variable and that is number okay now after that we will use a for loop and we will display the number of uh, terms of the Fibonacci series so I'm going to use the for loop in here and we will initialize our loop counter variable counter with the value of 1 and the condition here will be counter less than or equal to number and after that we will uh, increment the value of the counter variable. Now if the user is going to enter the number 5 that means he wants to display 5 terms then this uh, for loop will run from 1 to 5. So here uh, what we do is we will display the Fibonacci series. We know that the first number of the Fibonacci series that we have to display is 0 which is present in this t1 variable. So what we do is we will print that out. So I'm going to use the printf function in here and we will use percentage %d format specifier and after that I'm going to add a space in here and I'm going to display d1 and after that when we go to display the third number uh, we have to add the previous two numbers so here uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write term is equal to t1 plus t2 
Now we have the next term. So here we will be displaying the value present in this uh, t1 variable. So what we do is we will write t1 equal to t2. So we will store the value of the t2 variable in t1. That is the next term that we want to print in the t1. So when this for loop goes for the next iteration, it will display the value of the t1 variable. And after that, we will store t2 equal to next term. That is, we will store the value of this next term in this t2 variable. So now uh, we have uh, written the program and uh, let's run this. Enter the number of terms and I'm going to say 5 and it will display 0, 1, 1, 2 and 3. And now let's see how we get this output in here. Now here the user is going to enter the number 5. Now this for loop will run from 1 to 5. The counter variable will start from 1. Uh, this condition will satisfy. Counter is less than or equal to number. Uh, 1 is less than or equal to 5. So it will uh, satisfy this condition. So we will print out the value present in this t1. So we will display 0 because we have initialized t1 with the value of 0. And next what we are doing is we are storing t1 plus t2 in next term. So the next term will get 1 because 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. And after that we have t1 t2 in here. And after that we are storing the value of t2 in t1. t2 is containing 1. You know we have initialized this one. So the t1 will get 1 and t2 will get next term which is equal to 1. Okay. Now after that this counter variables value will be incremented and it will become 2. Now here we are printing the value of the t1 variable. Now t1 is containing 1 so it will display 1 in here. And after that we are performing next term equal to t1 plus t2. t1 is containing 1, t2 is containing 1 so the next term will get 2. And after that we are storing t2 variables value in t1. So t2 is containing 1 so that will be stored in t1 which will be 1 and we are storing next terms value in t2. So the next term is containing 2 and this time t2 will get 2. And again the counter variables value will be incremented and this time it will become 3. Okay now here this condition will satisfy 3 is less than or equal to uh, number and we will print the value of the t1 variable. So t1 is containing 1 and we will print that to the screen. And after that next term will be t1 plus t2. t1 is containing 1, t2 is containing 2. So the next term will get 3. And after that we are changing the value of t1 and t2. So t1 will get t2's value which will be 2 and t2 will get next term's value which will be 3 and after that the counter variables value will be incremented so it will become 4 and now again this condition satisfy 4 is less than or equal to 5 so we come to this printf statement and we will display t1 variables value so t1 is containing 2 at the moment so it will be displayed and after that next term is computed which is equal to t1 plus t2 which is equal to 2 plus 3 which is 5 so next term will be 5 and after that t1 will get t2's value which is equal to 3 and t2 will get next term's value which is equal to 5 and again the counter variables value will be incremented and it will become 5 and again this condition will satisfy counter less than or equal to number which is 5 less than or equal to 5 which is true so again we will display the t1 variables value t1 is containing 3 at the moment so it will display that and after that we are calculating the next term which is equal to t1 plus t2 so the next term will get 8 and after that we are storing t2 variables value in t1 t2 is containing 5 and that will be stored in here in t1 and after that the next terms value it will be stored in t2 so it will get 8 in here now after that what happens is counter variables value will be incremented so it will become 6. Now the user has entered the number 5 so this is 6 and this loop condition will fail and the for loop will stop. So we have printed these 5 numbers to the screen. They are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
2 and 3 so this is how this program is gonna work so this is it guys for this video thank you for watching if you like it hit the like button if you don't like it hit the dislike button if you want to say something then write that in the comment box for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll see you later in the next video